Brace yourself for a long post, because to understand my mother's character and history of being shady, I have to start from the beginning. We've had a rocky relationship for basically as long as I've been alive, but it's recently gotten to a breaking point where she no longer wants to talk to me or see me. So I'm posting this here in hopes of finding advice from anyone else who has had experience with this level of crazy. Background, I was raised by a single mother with no moral compass whatsoever. She divorced my dad and told everyone it was because he was dead, first of many lies. Before I was born, my mom had a successful business that she sold and was able to live off of that sale until I was a teenager. I lived a comfortable upper middle class life in a 4000 plus square foot house in a nice neighborhood, attended private schools and went on luxury vacations. Then when I was in high school, everything turned to shoot. It seemed that what my mom called work was essentially convincing rich people to invest in building things and then silently skimming off as much as she could while delivering the bare minimum or nothing at all. This finally caught up to her and someone noticed. She was sued by truly rich people and had to declare bankruptcy. This entire time she pretended nothing was wrong and wouldn't say a single thing about it at home. She refused to pay my school's tuition but kept dropping me off there as if nothing was wrong. I only had a hunch something was wrong because I was never assigned a locker, and I kept having to ask teachers why my name wasn't on their morning roll call list. The water or power would get shut off regularly without her saying a word, and we barely had any food to eat. But if I mentioned that I was hungry, she'd basically just tell me to go find something to eat, to get me to shut up. I was a child with no means of transportation, so that was not possible. I basically lived off of cup ramen and hot pockets for two years and was constantly sick due to lack of nutrition. Instead of admitting anything was wrong to anyone, she started borrowing money from other people, including friends and family, and then just never paid them back or ghosted them if they asked for an update. I lost all of my friends because she hit all of their parents up for money and successfully stole thousands from some of them. Those parents were rightfully pissed and made their kids, my friends, cut off all contact with me. Despite my lack of nutritional food and extreme depression, I graduated with a 4.0 GPA and went to college with a scholarship and loans, doing 100% of the paperwork all by myself, graduated and got a good job, motivated the entire time by my desperation to get out of poverty. Meanwhile, while I was away in college, my mom never bounced back from her bankruptcy. She lost my childhood home and moved into a small house and continued to hit up relatives and friends for money, even going as far as stealing money out of Christmas cards that were addressed to me or my sibling. She was in constant fights about money with her own siblings and went no contact with some of them because they finally snapped at my mom for stealing. My grandparents died and left my mom some inheritance that I think is how she afforded to stay in that house for a while. During this time, she started showing hoarding behaviors, and every room was full of unopened boxes of random stuff she bought. It was usually home furnishings that she was saving for her new bigger place that she would move into soon. She spent the next 10, yes, 10 years pretending she was about to move and would spend a tremendous amount of time looking at houses online and in person working with builders to ask for customizations and basically just pretending like she was going to buy something and move in, but never actually moved anywhere. This entire time she was working with investors on large building projects, but I started to sense something was wrong because none of the projects she was working on were ever actually built. At one point, she said she was preparing to move next month into her new luxury custom house at a specific address. So I got curious and drove to the address. It was an empty lot. This pattern repeated until 2019, when she moved out of her house and into my brother's apartment because she was getting ready to move again, this time into a 3000 plus square foot house that cost over $1 million. She would visit the construction site every week asking for customizations to get everything just the way she wanted it. But sure enough, 
Moving month came, and she said she had to back out of the purchase because the house had a roof leak. She was supposed to be staying with my brother until finding another house. But then infection 19 happened, and the housing market exploded. She got stuck living in my brother's apartment and stayed until late 2021, when my brother kicked her out because his girlfriend was moving in. After that, she came to live at my house for just a few months until her new house was ready. She stayed with me for over two years, never giving me any updates on the house situation unless I asked. There was always some magical problem getting in the way of her moving. She showed no signs of actually going to browse houses on the market. She pretended to be working and going to meetings, but I never saw any sign of actual work being done. She doesn't even own a laptop, tablet, or computer. A year and a half into staying with me, she started asking to borrow money, about $2K at a time, which she always eventually paid back, but never on time. She's done this five times now. Her latest job is supposedly in Hawaii, where she is saying she will be given a luxury Hawaiian condo upon the completion of her project of building condo buildings. She spent about a year working on this project. Again, no sign of actual work being done while she was living with me other than the occasional conference call taken in private, while spending all day just sitting in my house's guest bedroom, fiddling around on her phone. She only finally left because I got pregnant and kicked her out because the guest room became our nursery. This time she went to stay with our aunt and then immediately repeated the same pattern. Move in, pretend to be moving to Hawaii soon, and then just refuse to leave or provide updates as her move-in date is endlessly bumped out. All the while, she is continuing to ask to borrow money from me. After four months of living with her sister, a fight finally ensues when my aunt gets tired of the lies and my mom leaves her sister's house to move back in with my brother. My mom is now no contact with her sister because she was mean to her, but I'm pretty sure it's because she was trying to hit her sisters up for money while refusing to move out. My mom has another aunt who is mentally disabled, and my hunch is that she tried taking money from my disabled aunt and got yelled at by the other aunt. Every time my mom steals from people, she never learns any lesson or admits to any wrongdoing and makes it the other person's fault for being mean to her. So now Easter is around the corner, and my aunt always hosts an annual Easter party for all of us. But because my mom is now no contact with her, complete with long she's not my sister anymore speech. She blew up at me in tears when she learned that I still plan to visit my aunt's house as always, implying I was a traitor. While this is happening, I suddenly end up in the ER and in need of emergency surgery with a two week recovery time. My mom suddenly offers to stay with me, sleeping on a couch to help with my newborn while I'm bedridden. I'm desperate for help since it's an emergency and say yes. But all of a sudden, a month and a half passes by, and she still has not left, won't even mention leaving. And now my health problems are cited as the reason she has not been able to move to Hawaii yet, because she postponed her move to help me. She starts asking me for money again, and once again I give in and say yes. She always makes sure to corner me in person, and uses manipulative tactics, crying, saying her phone will get cut off, promising to pay back saying how well work is doing and how she'll have so who much money soon until I agree to give her money. So I gave her yet another dollar 2K, which is now over a month overdue for payback. I finally kick her out again and she goes back to stay with my brother. She has sprinkled hints in the past that she had no actual intention of moving. Hint one was when I started suggesting that she needed to leave my house and she broke down, crying, saying she didn't want to live alone. She knows no one in the entire state of Hawaii and has no friends or family there. So why move there of all places? Hint two was when I joked about building a tiny home in my yard for an office. She started doing serious research about it and suggested I do it. Hint three was she kept suggesting that I move into a bigger home. I can't afford that, even going as far as looking at houses in person and calling realtors on my behalf. Hint four was that she tried doing this to my brother too and almost convinced him to buy a huge $1 million house that
that he absolutely can't afford. She did all of the paperwork and everything, but thankfully he saw the light and backed out at the last minute. Hint five was that when I signed my newborn baby up for daycare and asked her to leave, she acted shocked because she thought she would be the babysitter. Why would someone supposedly moving to Hawaii be shocked to not get to be a live-in babysitter? So she's had a long track record of not so subtly trying to find a way to permanently live with me or my brother. The present. So once again this week she was going to move to Hawaii. But my brother told her to get out of his apartment because he is having a visitor over. He won't tell her who for a few days. My brother probably finally snapped at her too because my mom mentioned he is no longer really talking to her. She calls me, which is the first red flag, because she only ever calls when it's time to turn on the tears and manipulate me. Suddenly last week to say she needs to stay with me for just three nights until her flight to Hawaii, which was supposed to be the next day, but got moved because her back hurt. I asked her for any proof that she had an actual flight booked, and she ignored me. She continued to beg in tears to come stay with me on my couch again, but I'm completely exhausted by her behavior, her lying and her stealing, and finally put my foot down and said no. Her sob story makes no sense because she has no ticket, no packed bags, and any normal person moving out of their hometown permanently would at least try to do a going away party or say goodbye in person or something. So she's basically showing no actual signs of moving anywhere. She tries to push me into letting her stay for over 30 minutes on the phone until I firmly say no. And she starts sobbing and hangs up. The fight. Cue the melodramatic texts where she all of a sudden has decided to go to Hawaii today and says that I probably won't see her again for a very long time and hopes I have a good life. Again, completely unhinged behavior because just last month she was talking about coming to visit us. We live in Texas, her home state, once per month after moving. I texted her to wish her a nice flight and she has not responded. I'm low-key worried she might do something drastic after sending those texts. I doubt she actually flew to Hawaii today, but have no way of proving my suspicions. She's acting like I'll never see or hear from her again. Another fun manipulation tactic. She probably thought I'd apologize and let her stay, but nope. The question, despite my mother being a hurtful nut job, I want to maintain some sort of parental relationship and let my new son have a grandparent. But how the hell do I salvage a relationship like this without being a doormat? My mom refuses to admit she is having major financial problems and continues to blatantly lie about her plans for the future and shows up at my door begging for money every other month. It was disturbing enough when she started this pretending to move soon act 10 plus years ago, but she's almost 70 now and I'm genuinely worried she's going to end up homeless or worse. She has burned every single bridge, friendship, and relationship in her entire life from constant lying and stealing and seemed to think her kids would never abandon her. But my brother and I are exhausted. I want her out of my house for good. What are my options here? Do I even have options? WTF is going on to make someone behave like this? Is there a way I can somehow get proof of all my suspicions that her job and travel plans are all fake? I feel like I'm losing my mind from stress. I don't want my mom to hate me or be homeless, but this shoot needs to stop. But I genuinely don't know what to do, and the situation is so bizarre that I don't know who to ask for help. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. So you know she is lying. The whole world knows she is lying at this stage. It's time to let her hit rock bottom and then help her get government assistance for housing, unemployment, pension, dementia, and so on. Get your brother on board. Stop providing cash or accommodation. Wait until it's obvious she is homeless, confront her and force her to admit her financial issues, and then use aged care support services to find a way to help her that is permanent. For goodness sake, do not let her anywhere near her grandchild until she is stable and in a stable living situation. There is no benefit to a child to have a relationship with a pathological liar. Comment two, you can't have everything you want. You can let her take advantage of you or you can risk ruining your relationship. That's it. That's the choice. 
Boundaries aren't about turning other people into who you want them to be and getting them to act how you want them to act. They are about how you act to protect yourself and foster who you want to be. I heavily suggest the book Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents to you. Also, Boundaries, Where You End and I Begin. But the adult children won first. Now for the update. Thanks for all the comments on my last post. Here's what went down these past two weeks. So, my mom's been at my brother's place, right? Well, turns out the visitor he had over was a private investigator. My brother's done with her lies too, and he hired this guy to dig up whatever dirt he could on her so-called job in Hawaii. The PI found nothing. No job, no condo, no projects. Just a web of lies. Then, out of nowhere, my mom gets served. One of her old investors tracked her down and is suing her for fraud. My brother and I get dragged into this mess because apparently she's been using our addresses for her scams. The lawsuit's big, and it's like the past is coming back to haunt us all over again. But here's the kicker. My brother's PI digs up that she's got a stash of cash. She's been hiding money from all of us, playing broke while sitting on a pile she swiped from who knows where. The sense of betrayal is unreal. My brother's furious and I'm just numb. In the middle of this chaos, my mom's car gets repossessed. Turns out she's been taking loans against it and not paying them back. She calls me crying, begging for a ride, but I'm done. I tell her to figure it out herself. She must have felt cornered because the next thing I know, she's at my doorstep with a suitcase, saying she's been evicted from my brother's and has nowhere to go. I almost caved, but then I remembered the stash of cash. I call her out on it and she breaks down, admitting she's been hoarding money for emergencies. I tell her she needs to use that money to get a place and sort her life out. She tries to guilt trip me, saying family should stick together, but I stand my ground. I even offer to help her find an apartment, but that's it, no more money, no more staying with me. She leaves and I think that's the end of it. But no, she goes to our aunt, the one she's been no contact with and spins some sob story about how she's been wronged by everyone. And my aunt, bless her heart, believes her and takes her in. Two days later, my aunt calls me, apologizing. She found the stash of cash while my mom was out. She's shocked. Can't believe she fell for the lies again. My mom comes back to find her secrets out and flips out. She packs her bags and leaves in a huff, saying she's done with all of us. Now here's where I get my sweet revenge. I've been documenting everything, the lies, the scams, the money she owes me. I take it all to the lawyer handling the fraud case against her. It's not just about the money. It's about not letting her get away with it anymore. The lawyer's eyes light up when he sees my evidence. It's the missing piece he needed. My mom's now facing serious charges, and with my testimony, there's no way she can weasel out of it. So she's gone now, probably trying to find another relative to con. But this time, she's not just running from family. She's running from the law. And as for me, I'm finally free from her web of lies. I can raise my son without her chaos. And that's the best closure I could ask for. Thanks for sticking with me through this saga. My husband lied about his past and let his family walk all over me. So I gathered evidence and left him penniless and alone. I, at the age of 28, got married to M, who was 36, 10 months ago, after three years of dating. During the courtship, he was the sweetest. We would meet once or twice a week. He was kind, empathetic, and understanding. We connected on our mutual love for cats. He proposed, I said yes. Our families met after a few months. We are Indian Muslims. His family is pretty orthodox. After our families met, he informed me that he was married seven years ago. The girl asked for a divorce, Kula, due to compatibility issues. My trust was broken because he kept such a huge thing a secret for me for the course of the relationship. It took a long time for me to build my trust on him again. My family convinced me to give him another chance. They thought that since he had one failed marriage, he would do his level best to make sure this one succeeds. 
Eventually, we got married in May 2023. We began living with his parents and one sister. This living situation is pretty common in India. Since we got married, things have changed. I got to know that he isn't serious about his work. He works with his father at all or responsible towards his family. He justified it by saying that his family had financially abused him for more than a decade. This is why he doesn't like them anymore and keeps them at a distance whilst living with them. We stopped going out because his mother doesn't approve of it. His mom tends to micromanage him, and now she does it to me as well. He keeps defending her, saying that she's old. That's just how she is. He expects me to quietly listen to her and let her micromanage me. He doesn't hold a full-time job, but wants to go to the gym every night at 9 p.m. He comes home by 11 o'clock to 11.30 p.m., has dinner and goes down again to feed cats at 12 a.m. Then he comes home at 2 o'clock to 2.30 a.m. This has been going on since we got married. It was happening earlier as well. I just wasn't aware because we weren't living together. I've had conversations with him, begged him to change his gym and feeding timings. I wanted to have dinner with him every night and just the two of us. This quality time was very important to me. He would make me wait till 11, 1130. It started affecting my health, but he refused to change his timings. Not for me, not for his family. He wants me to quit my job if I want to spend time with him. Even after living under the same roof, our schedules don't match. However, he wants me to come home by 9.30 p.m. from my work. I need to look after his family, serve everyone dinner, take care of their medications, etc. I cannot stay out. I am not allowed to join a gym. I am not allowed to meet any friends without him. Whenever we fought, he would use hurtful language with me. Just recently, he threatened to hit me. He has fat shamed me for putting on a few kgs of weight after marriage, told me he wouldn't be attracted to me if I got fat. Above all, my in-laws expect me to have a kid. They believe that husband would become responsible after having a kid. But what if he doesn't? I am not ready for a kid. I cannot ruin an innocent child's life in this mess. I have mentally checked out of my marriage. He is not the guy that I fell in love with. I'm starting to believe that he created a facade for the three years of courtship. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, this man will not change. A kid will not make anyone more responsible. It's like buying a kid a pet. The parent always ends up taking care of them Responsibility isn't born out of thin air. He needs to want to change, and he doesn't want to. I'm sorry you're going through this. Please get out. Comment two. Yeah, this is a lot of issues. Individually, many could be solved, but collectively, this isn't salvageable. He doesn't want a life partner. He wants a servant. I think it's best you get out of this marriage before you get pregnant. Now, for the update, thanks for all the comments on my last post. Things have only gotten worse since then. Last month, my sister-in-law, who lives with us, decided to stir the pot. She's always been the type to hold a grudge, and lately, she's been extra bitter. She started spreading rumors about me to the rest of the family, saying I'm the reason for the tension in the house. She even told them I've been talking about them behind their backs, which is a complete lie. I guess she's jealous or something, but it's causing a lot of problems. One day, I came home from work, and there was this silence that just hung in the air. Turns out she had convinced everyone that I was planning to leave my husband and take half of their property. My husband, M, didn't even stand up for me. He just sat there letting his sister poison our family against me. I felt so alone. Then things took a turn. My husband's cousin, who's always had it out for me, decided to get involved. He's the type who thinks he's the family's unofficial judge and jury. He called a family meeting and demanded that I explain myself. I was shocked. I had to defend my character in front of the whole family with accusations flying left and right. It was humiliating, but I had proof. I had saved messages and emails that showed I was innocent. When I presented them, the room went quiet. My sister-in-law's face turned red and she couldn't say anything. It was clear to everyone that she had lied. My husband finally spoke up, but only to say that family matters should stay private. Too little, too late. 
just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, my husband did something unthinkable. He took all of our savings and invested them in a friend's business without telling me. A business that failed within weeks. We were left with nothing. He said it was his money and his decision, but it was our future he gambled away. I was furious. I couldn't believe the man I married could do something like that. It was like I didn't even know him anymore. I started to question everything about our relationship. How could I have been so blind? The aftermath was a mess. His parents were furious, not just with him, but with me too. As if I had something to do with his reckless decision. They said I should have kept a closer eye on him, as if that's a wife's job. I was at my wit's end. But then, another shocker dropped. My husband's ex-wife reached out to me. She told me that she left him because he had done the same thing to her. He had a history of making bad financial decisions and lying about it. She warned me to get out before it was too late. I felt vindicated. It wasn't just me. He had a pattern of this behavior. I wasn't the problem. He was. I decided to take control of my life. I moved out of that toxic house and started staying with a friend. I'm currently looking for a lawyer to discuss my options. I don't know what the future holds, but I know I can't go back to the way things were. Thanks for reading. My best friend's husband tries to cut me off, but she leaves him, and now he blames me for their broken marriage. So I walk away and let her deal with the mess she made. Throw away for privacy. Edit update at bottom of page. My 38-year-old married best friend, who is 28 years old, and I have known each other for over 10 years. I have feelings for her, and at times it has been reciprocated. A few years ago, she got married, but we remained friends and in contact. Later on, her husband tried to force her to block me, but she continues talking to me secretly. Since her marriage, I have dated on and off. And whenever I bring up women I'm talking to, she starts talking about how horrible they are and that I should stop seeing them. I can't imagine what my life would be without her. But we can't have a relationship while she's married, and I don't want to be single forever. Edit. We met through a classmate of mine who was also a classmate of hers. They were dating while she was 18 and he was 20 or 21, I think. The three of us often studied together and hung out, movies and concerts. They dated for a year and broke up. About a year after they broke up, she saw me on campus and added me on socials. We started hanging out and doing the same stuff we all did before that. A while later, when my girlfriend and I broke up, she asked if we could pursue something. We did for a while until I moved away for a few months, work. When I came back, we started hanging out again. Fast forward a few years where we were both dating other people and we got an apartment together. We both ended up single, so we became a kind of de facto couple. We moved to new places and both started dating other people again. She met her husband and now we're up to the present. I still have feelings for her, but I wouldn't act on them while she's married. I don't treat her any differently from other friends I regularly spend time with. And we spend time together with our mutual friends every few months for birthdays or other celebrations. I can't imagine what my life would be without her. But we can't have a relationship while she's married, and I don't want to be single forever. Over the years, we have helped each other through breakups, health scares, loss of family and friends, financial trouble, and whatever difficult situations arise in life. She is the first non-family member I'll call when I end up in a car accident or sustain an injury. The first is my mother. Besides her parents and husband, I'm the first person she calls for the same things. No, I will not pursue anything with her while she's in an exclusive relationship. That's not something I'm remotely comfortable with. She does point out red flags I may have missed, but is equally critical of women with no apparent red flags. Final TLDR and solution. I wrote an email explaining why I chose to block her and blocked all of the communication methods we use. I won't renew my current lease and and moving to a new apartment far enough away that she won't be able to find it without being tipped off. I have informed shared friends of my decision and the reasons for it, with the express request that they not pass information about me to her or relay messages from her to me. If they do, they'll get cut off too. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. 
You are an absolute piece of shoot. You know she is married and you know that your presence in her life is creating conflict in her marriage and you are continuing to interact with her. Your selfishness knows no bounds. You are even saying that you cannot be with her while she is married, giving the implication that as soon as her marriage is destroyed, possibly by your presence, you are going to swoop in. If she was really your friend, you would want her to be happy with her husband and you would respect the marriage boundaries. But like I said above, you are a true piece of shoot. Comment two. Uh, excuse me? You have known her for over 10 years and you are 38 and she is 28. So you were hanging out with this girl while you were in your late 20s and she was under 18. Also, she is your best friend. God, you are gross and pathetic. And it sounds like you are the one hanging around hoping she eventually ends up with you. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around for this update. So, where do I even start? Remember my married best friend? Things have gone from complicated to a complete mess. Out of the blue, she tells me she's leaving her husband. Says she's been unhappy for years and it's not because of me, but I can't help feeling like I'm part of the reason. She moves out and guess who she calls for help? Me. I'm torn between wanting to be there for her and knowing this is a bad idea. But I help because that's what friends do, right? Next thing I know, her husband is blowing up my phone, accusing me of wrecking his marriage. He's threatening to come after me, and I'm trying to keep my cool, but it's getting to me. I've never been the reason for a couple's split, and the weight of that is crushing. Meanwhile, she's staying at some hotel, and I'm the one she leans on for emotional support. I'm trying to be a good friend, but it's hard when every conversation is a reminder of what I can't have. And then she drops another shocker. She's pregnant. I'm floored. She's not sure what to do, and I'm the one she's looking to for advice. I tell her she needs to think about what's best for her and the baby, but inside, I'm a mess. Her husband finds out about the pregnancy and suddenly wants to fix things. He's begging for forgiveness, promising to change. She's considering it, and I'm watching the whole reconciliation from the sidelines. It's like a bad soap opera, and I'm the guy who could lose everything. But here's where I prove I'm in the right. I step back. I tell her that she needs to figure things out with her husband without me in the picture. It's the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's the right thing. She's upset, says she needs me, but I stay firm. I can't be the other guy, the homewrecker, the reason a kid might grow up in a broken home. Days turn into weeks, and it's radio silence. I'm out of the loop, but it's for the best. I focus on work, on myself. Then, out of nowhere, she's at my door. She's made her choice. She's going to raise the baby on her own. She's filed for divorce, and she's here telling me I was right to step back, that it helped her see what she needed to do. It's a bittersweet victory. I'm glad she's finding her way, but it's a reminder of what can't be. I'm still moving, still cutting ties. It's the only way to move forward, to find my own happiness without being caught in her whirlwind life. Thanks for reading this far. It's been a hectic ride and I appreciate you being here for it. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.